There's been a few people. It's been you, <clears throat> Rosenberg, Raw, you know, Adi Boom back in the day. Oops. There's some people that definitely held RBE down yeah. for a long time. And I felt like y'all was like the stepchild to either URL or King of the Dot. And a lot of y'all's loyalty is kind of like being rewarded at right now. Like y'all are like the big dog. A lot of people talk about RBE as the big dogs. Right. How does that feel for you? And how does it feel to to to, to know that the top, the tables are turning in terms of like you battling on a on a subpar league or a league that's lesser than. It wasn't hard for me to believe in the trajectory of the company when I already saw the authenticity of the owners. Like platforms are either going to excel or decline based on the practices and the personalities and the character of the owners. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not shocked that right now RBE is the number one league. It's not even debated. It's Like it's been so long since any other league that was referred to as number one had real, like really good events that it's not even a, it's not even something to argue. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm not shocked by any of that because when you got somebody like Shata, when you got somebody like ARP who are principle minded men outside of battle rap, you know what I'm saying? Who their personality is, I'm a man of character. You know what I'm saying? Which is why you can't find nobody. You can see people complaining about different things, but it'll never be about bad business. I guarantee you that. You know what I'm saying? You'll never see it because they literally, like I said in the Trez battle, how you are with anything is how you are with everything, which is a testament to why in a regular life they were successful before they created a platform that became successful. And, and let's be honest, even right now you're in the middle of a big battle uh, with, with Head Ice, but yeah. you have other battles booked. Yeah. And I'm not sure any other league would be as as understanding of but, that. You bro, know what I'm saying? Let me tell you what's real, bro. Let me show you how much of a solid nigga and not a hater ARP and Shata is, bro. Bro, these men literally just through regular conversation chopping it up because we don't really talk about battle rap when we talk. You know what I'm saying? At all. It came up in Cabo one day, and this is years ago, bro. Years ago, at least seven, eight years ago, bro. He was like, yo, well, listen, all I'm telling you now, if you get the opportunity to be on URL, I understand, you know what I'm saying? You you flying the flag red breed, you know what I'm saying? And you always got to, you always could be right here, bro, hands down. But if you get that opportunity and you feel like that opportunity is going to be a good one for you and your family, I want you to take it. This is what they telling me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you not... How do you not show loyalty to somebody who already set the playing field for you to be able to get money everywhere, anywhere? That, that's why my hashtag is the no contract killer. You see ARP say it on multiple interviews. Like, I've never signed a contract to rap on Rare Breed. It wasn't until as of late or recent, once I became business minded, started my company, started my LLC, that I started booking my battles through my LLC. Know what I'm saying to build my business credits through these transactions to show that I have a, a track record of doing business uh, ventures with other companies. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. Outside of that, show off the artist. Bro, I never had to put my name on a sheet of paper for people to know I was gonna keep my word. Know what I'm saying I never had nobody on Red Breed ever tell me not to go get money somewhere. You get what I'm saying? Not to take make good on the opportunity. I've never had it. You know what I mean? So. That right, that I appreciate, but that's just who they are. You know what I'm saying? That's just who they are. So I appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? Fully. Fully. Fuck all that. I kill him with the word pulverize. Hey, hey. I kill him with the word pulverize. Yeah, you heard what the fuck I said? Pull. Rise, and then he fucking dead. Fuck all that, I kill him with the word pulverize. Hey, hey. I want to talk about the raw battle because I felt like that was a battle that y'all had to kind of solidify status or gauge some type of status of everything. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, do you feel like you won that battle? I know a lot of people got you losing. How, how do you feel about that battle? With raw? Yeah, with raw. I'm going to keep it all the way a thousand with you, bro. Like, 
I'll say I lost. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'll say I lost. And the reason I'm going to say I lost is because it doesn't matter. It's really not about if your material is better than somebody. Because the, the, the actual culture depicts who wins and loses. And as much as it was a learning experience for me being at my first time in front of a crowd that, that big, you'll see that in my first round, control the stage, you know what I'm saying, completely getting a bunch of reactions, shaking the building, right? But it also taught me that in my second round, it taught me that one thing that they don't like, it's hard to get the crowd back. You feel what I'm saying? And it don't matter what you're saying when the footage drop, if the crowd in there ain't getting it, because some people that watch the footage, they'll think something fire based on how the crowd that you was in front of react to it. And if they not reacting to it because you ain't get them back, it is not fire to nobody watching. Let me, let me ask you something. That was the first, like, I always looked at URL as like kind of clickish. I kind of look at like very celebrity-ish and kind of a who's who. Yeah. I never got that feel coming to club drum, RBE events, everything. Yeah. Max out one in Atlanta. They actually had signs that had whack bar. No, fact. Fire bar on one side. That's like, a fact. Like, how was it on that stage? You know so, what I'm saying? Because, you know, you you, you, and, you and Raw had y'all mixed emotions up there. But, like, mm -hmm. like take me through being actually being up there. Because that was the first time I kind of ever really seen anything like that. No, yeah. Let me tell you. I, at the, I think that that's something that should be brought back. Because to tell you the truth. You mean a, you mean a sign? No, I'm dead serious, bro. Oh, like, like, like why, why, why you feel that way? Talk, talk to me. Because, bro, that shit, bro, well, it's so just watching the battles. Because I know I'm an artist and I'm a battler, but just watching the battles after they drop, seeing the people like this, bro, it's comical, bro. I'm sorry, bro. It's wild, entertaining. Plus, does it fuck with you when you see it on stage? Like when you're up oh, there and they do like if you think because you you obviously think you writing fire shit. No, of course, so of if, course if, you do. Everybody think they do. But what I'll say is this: if you are a person that's steadfast, because I'm not gonna lie, after I did what I did in the Rosenberg battle, there's some people that wouldn't have made it. But remember, that was in my second round. Mm -hmm. I had a whole, and it was toward the beginning or maybe toward the middle of the second round. So I still had another whole half a round and full round to do. You get what I'm saying? And I still delivered my other half a round and my full round with the same passion and delivery. I would have did it because it, it couldn't break me. It, there's some people who would have just crumbled right then and there. And you would have been able to see it in the performance that it affected them. And I chose not to wear that in the moment. You get what I'm saying? But... Just being up on that stage and seeing them like this and seeing them flipping it around back and forth, I think it's a good thing because it's kind of like a census. It allows you to firsthand see what the population fuck with and don't fuck with. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you'll know how to gauge a crowd of that magnitude and of that of that stature, and you'll be able to craft your material for what will be received better because it's like medicine. I don't care how good the medicine is. A kid don't like it just because of the word medicine. You feel what I'm saying? They gonna automatically do this. No, you gotta actually get them to try this. You know what I'm saying? So, like when they once they, once people show you what they like, don't like, it's a way to gauge what people like and dislike. Okay, let me ask you this: you know I mean? After the battle, mm -hmm. how did you feel? You know about about your your performance and everything that happened. Also, uh. Oh, let me let them know. I felt, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Uh, hold on, I let me, like me re-ask that, let me re-ask that. Mm -hmm. Okay, after the battle, take me into how you felt, and also, how you, you know, you weren't on Max Out too. Yeah. So, how, during that time, what is, what is Show Off out thinking about? I like, chose like, to sit out. Okay. I chose to sit out because I felt like I needed that time, because I was not... I hadn't made the proper evaluations and corrections that I needed to be able to grace that stage. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That crowd. Because, again, it was my first time rapping in front of that many people. You know what I'm saying? I've been on stages, like you mentioned, drum. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, that probably was the biggest, you know what I'm saying, crowd I rapped in front of. You right. feel what I'm saying? But there's a huge difference between a drum and a Believe music hall, bro. Right. Like, there's... It's a fresh pack of Newports. Like hundreds and, you know, and hundreds and hundreds of, of people. Yo, 
it was it was thousands of people, bro. The entire bottom row and entire top row was completely full, bro. They sold out. You remember the line when you first pulled up? Mm -hmm. The line outside stretched, bro. You couldn't see the back of the line, bro. And I remember that. And the, that that's the that was a beautiful thing for me because I tell people all the time in the times of celebration, the only thing happening. Uh, or the or the times of of good times celebration is the only thing happening you know what i'm saying it's usually in the trying times and you know the not so good times that the lessons the lessons are there that's where you learn that you know what i'm saying that's why i appreciate that instance and going through that and even with max out three coming up although it's in a small room remember i'm still going off of the last time they saw me connected to the brand and name and magnitude of card like max out so people are gonna automatically hear show off Max out and revert back to Rosenberg. Okay. They're not gonna revert back to show off had a classic with Chef Trez, Battle with a Knight. Show off had a classic with Jag, Battle with a Knight. They're not gonna go back to show off was on a car, Blood, Sweat, and Tier Seven, and had uh back to back battles. They trying to figure out which one of his two battles is Battle with a Knight, meaning I won first place and second place. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna go back to that. They gonna go back to the last time they saw a show off connected to this brand, this big name, Max Out. You know what I'm saying? But I love that too because September 2nd, bro, <laughs> I'm coming for mine. Before we move on, uh, detail you you and ARP and you and Shata's relationship. Those are my brothers. Those are my brothers. Let me explain something, bro. People who could crack jokes and be funny and all that, but there's people right now who, when they facing time, they don't even have they, they they sandbox or actual family members in court with them. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's all the jokes and that's cool, but when Showa was facing 10 to 25 years while being an active battle rapper on Red Breed, you know who was in court with me? My brother was in court with me. Before it was time for me to go to court, you know who was hitting my phone damn near every day? Like, yo, any updates from the lawyer? My brother was. You understand? Like, it, there's, there's, and at the time, just to be a hundred with you, as far as I was concerned, I hadn't felt that I'd done enough or showed enough to even deserve that type of loyalty, which was even furthermore a testament to the character of these men. All right. You feel what I'm saying? And that's, like I said before, bro, it don't take a full day to recognize sunshine. At the end of the day, when you get a, a chance to meet men of that caliber, that have a pattern of success, non-malicious behaviors, not, they don't have the behaviors of somebody trying to use you, you know what I'm saying? Even though you're useful, they'll, they don't use you, they utilize you. That's two separate things. You understand what I'm saying? Then by all rights, you gotta be good to these men. You gotta show them the love the way they showed you. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is, those are my brothers. That's why I, people could, they could, like I said, people could say what they want, but I don't, I don't play about them brothers right there. They're my brothers. That's family. You know what I'm saying? So just be mindful of the shit you say in front of me about them. You know what I'm saying? The internet is the internet. That's cool. But just be mindful of what you say in front of me about them. Chris Nunn Wyatt. 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 Man, subscribe to the channel, man. Don't be a hater your whole life. 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 Chris, Chris, why are you?